This is our week three Patreon video, and we thought, what better thing to look at than D'Amico Ryan's defense? It's a defense that's getting a little bit of criticism because of the obvious failure at the end of the game against Green Bay. So we thought we'd take a look at exactly what types of coverages he's running, what happened in the final two plays, and also a little something interesting that we actually haven't seen from Sala, and we've only seen now once this year from D'Amico Ryan's. Let's go to the All-22, David, and we'll start at the very beginning of the game. This is third and four, as you can see there in the beautifully framed uh, clock there at Levi's. Uh, and this is going to be a man coverage play, and you knew it was going to be a long day immediately as soon as this happened early in the game. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I think there's there's kind of a number of things that we look at here with this play that, that we ended up kind of seeing throughout and things that we talked about in the pod. Um, and, and so I think the first thing, right, so this is, again, uh, is a third and three play. Um, and this was something that Green Bay did frequently in these situations, right? Third downs um, were largely empty downs, right? So no backs in the backfield there. They're going to spread everyone out. And and then we see this was it was definitely a theme in the first half, and they kind of switched it up in the second half. But uh, the 49ers went to he pretty heavy cover one man coverage in these situations uh, throughout most of the first half there. And, and I think this is uh, kind of what we were talking about. We mentioned a little bit about the 49ers not really uh, disguising and, and doing a lot of stuff um, pre-snap to really kind of throw you off the scent of what they're trying to do and, and kind of playing more obvious man coverage. And this is, I think, a great example of, of what we mean by that, right? It's just you see every single man coverage defender underneath is directly aligned over the player that they're going to be covering, right? They're up on the line of scrimmage. Their eyes are locked on that guy. There's not a lot happening here that's going to make you think like this is as clear of a man coverage read as you're going to get right and and they don't change anything post snap so um as as you get going here now obviously uh the the results were kind of mixed and and so you see k1 williams getting beat over the top here but i think the the final thing that we kind of talked about this play illustrates is how quickly rogers was getting the ball out right i mean it's just uh even when they go down the field like this i mean this is basically uh, what amounts to a three-step drop from the gun, and he's hitting the, the the last step of his drop, and he's getting this out right, and so you're still getting uh, a play that is, you know, what over 20 yards in the air, there, almost 25 yards in the air, uh, and and ultimately a big gain of of 42 for this offense, but he doesn't have the ball long enough for the pass rush to do much of anything. I mean, you can see Bosa with about as clean of a win uh, as, as you can expect him to get, and it just doesn't matter. The other thing that's interesting about this play is the personnel package. Uh, if you go back to the sideline view, you'll note that the deep safety uh, has a bit of uh, some hair peeking out from behind his helmet. Yeah. Uh, and that's Talano Hufanga. And, and the Niners didn't go back to this personnel package again, but it's interesting to see both Ward and Tart covering in the slot. It, it's something that maybe to keep an eye on for future games, to, especially with their, their, their cornerback depth. I'm sure that had a little bit of something to do with it, but... Something to look back at in case they go to something like this in the future in terms of a unique personnel package that allows them to take advantage of something like Jimmy Ward's versatility. Uh, but now we get to the second play. And the second play is going to be really interesting because it's something the Niners really don't do and haven't done over the course of really the last couple of years, the last few years under Sala and now under Ryans. And that is a sim pressure or a simulated pressure. And that is effectively a pressure where it looks like you're blitzing and you send someone that's not traditionally a down lineman, but you drop someone else and you still have four rushers at the end of the day as a way to try to confuse the protection scheme of the offense. Right. So as you see the the kind of pre-snap here, and, and let's go ahead and, and let it run, but you've got the basically the four down linemen, right? Three of them actually have their hand on the ground and then D4 to standing up on the edge there. But as you, you look at this alignment pre-snap, uh, those are the four players that you would traditionally expect to rush. And so what you can see there is, is D Ford actually ends up dropping out and then you get the, the corner blitz there up top to, for your fourth rusher. So it's a blitz look right in, in terms of how the offensive line needs to handle it and communicate things. Um, it, it gives them that idea of, of a blitz, right. And, and not knowing exactly where those guys are going to come from but you're still very safe in coverage, right? You're not losing a coverage defender by sending five. And so uh, you still get all seven of your guys in coverage that you're typically going to expect there. 
and you know they end up just kind of getting out to a, a quarters look with this one and um yeah this was the first time they didn't run this uh, a single time uh last season under Sala and this is the first time that they ran it uh so far through three games this season now you can see here that it, Rogers even goes to the right spot though it's it's the right decision bad execution because he ends up going to, to Devontae Adams down here at the bottom he's the number two receiver at the bottom of the screen and I mean he's open there's a whole shot there yeah. but it, it's not one that he's able to execute this is a middle of the field open or split safety look you can see both safeties there and that means you've got a little bit of an area on the sideline there doesn't end up pulling it off but we, we talked in the pre-show about Aaron Rodgers ability to diagnose the blitz and get the ball to the right spot and while he didn't execute he I mean he was going he was cooking to the right spot and and so this was uh, one thing that we saw from from D'Amico Ryan's a simulated pressure that we hadn't seen before put her on film um on from this angle though this is where you begin to see some of the chips though I mean Bosa is yep. on the ground at this point yep. and and that's Robert Tanyan Robert Tanyan's like my first responsibility here is to get him on the ground and then I'm just going to go out into a route like I don't think that he cares much about that route at all he cares more about getting Bosa to the ground and it was really really effective I mean if they can do that I think the Niners may have to find a way to move Bosa around and get him away from those chips so that he can be effective. Yeah, absolutely. And this is, I think, a good, again, they're empty here. And and this is something we've seen for two weeks now, right, where, where teams are kind of spreading things out, but they're still keeping someone tight to the formation a little bit. And yeah, like you mentioned, they, they really ultimately are no more than than a check down option is in terms of their role in the pass concept. Their Their primary responsibility is, hey, go out there and give Nick Bosa a shot. Now we get to the final two plays and these are the two plays that hurt the most. These were the two plays effectively that ended the game. The, the first one is going to be against a quarters look because as we move into the second half, the 49ers start playing more split safety looks, more coverages like this. And whether they played man or whether they played split safety, Aaron Rodgers was able to get the ball to the right place in some cases because of just some subpar play from the 49ers. Yeah, and this one is is one where you, you, Rogers talked a little bit about you know after the game in in terms of kind of what the the thought process was in this play and kind of what they were trying to do. And so you can see you've got Randall Cobb that's down here. So in this bunch that's at the bottom, uh, he's the point guy, right? He's the one in the middle uh, that's up on the line of scrimmage there. And so he's basically gonna run what amounts to a clear out. He's just gonna run straight at Jimmy Ward and and look to kind of pull him out of the play. And then you're gonna see Devonte Adams on the outside there. Uh, is going to kind of come in behind him on that that really deep dig route. And so because of this, because Jimmy Ward now is no longer a factor, he's got to take that vertical route from the number two receiver. Uh, really the only one that has a chance to, to make a play on this is Fred Warner. And you can see Fred Warner, I mean, he's, his initial alignment, right, is, is pretty normal, about five yards deep. Um, but it, at the time that he kind of makes this jump here, I mean, he is just about at the 45, right? So he's like basically 18, 19 yards deep and, and typically in a normal situation right now, obviously this is 37 seconds left. You know, they're, they're definitely playing more of a softer shell and, and going to be generally getting more depth than you would typically expect. But like on a normal down, usually like a good depth for a, for a linebacker to get to is around like the 12 yard mark, like 12 yards. And, and that's enough depth to be able to basically play the routes. They're going to break kind of in that 15 to 18 yard area, right? You can be a factor, uh, and kind of get in the throwing window for those throws. And so he is, you know, a whole six yards deeper than that, uh, on this because of the situation and, and basically just takes, an incredible throw. I mean, we'll get a, a better look at, at the ball here from the end zone view, but yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's just like, it's, it's tough to do a whole lot about this. Like maybe if you want to get really nitpicky, you can say that Warner, uh, could even be more aggressive getting back considering the situation and just like maybe even open up and run a little bit. But like, again, it, it's, he's, he's got a ton of depth here and this is just a hell of a throw. And you see again, from this angle, the, the attention they're giving to Bosa. And, and this time, you don't get him down on the ground, but you, you make him basically add an extra second to his rush because he's basically got a jab step around a tight end. And that extra second is all Aaron Rodgers needs to get the ball into really the perfect spot because he gets it over a linebacker that is playing as well as you could ask a linebacker to get depth. We, we talked about it on our Patreon videos that from Schemeth last year about how really linebackers generally don't get enough depth 
when they're being asked to cover these these types of zones. Here, Warner plays it really, really well. And and so you get an extra second in terms of pass protection. The the Packers were in there kind of like double wing again, which they like to do. Um, and I mean, you can see on the other side too, we talked about Aaron Bosa, Jones, but, yeah. um, yeah, Ford's getting shipped there too. Yeah. And, and they did that a couple times, right? They, it's almost like double wing, right? They've got a back and, and a running back, uh, or a tight end and a running back out on those wings and they become two extra guys that are going to help buy you just an extra second for Aaron Rodgers to do what he needs to do. Um, and, and that's all he really needed. You get to the, the dagger, which is the play after this. And it's not the, the play immediately after this, but it's, a uh, a uh, two-man coverage where they're in another two-high shell. They're playing man coverage. And in this case, it just is a mistake from Lenoir or Lenor. And it, it ended up costing the 49ers a game. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, you know, two-man is your late half, you know, end of game, um, third and super long coverage, right? Like pretty much most teams are going to go to to this in, in those situations. Um, and the 49ers, I think have a little trouble getting lined up. I mean, you can see Jimmy Ward here. So we, like we talked about in the first play, right? With the cover one play, how in man coverage, you're going to see basically all of their, uh, defenders like get directly over the guys that they're supposed to be covering. And so you can see down here at the bottom, they're getting there, right? And Mosley and, uh, who else is that? Whoever is, is there in the slot there that I can't see his number, um, but they're they're kind of over there, guys. You see Fred Warner that's over there, uh, over Aaron Jones off to the kind of left hand side. You see uh, Lenore up there on on Adams, and so Jimmy Ward. Uh, I, it looks like there's some confusion as to what call they're going to be in. He's a little late getting over. But the thing that even that right because they don't end up targeting Tunyon on this play, right? Um, even though they could have, like, and he's he's open because Ward's struggling to to get to the right spot. Um, but the bigger thing, and uh, I would say first look at this, look at Mosley at the bottom of the screen, right? So in two man, usually what you're going to get from all of the underneath man coverage defenders is this kind of tight trail technique, right? They're going to get up uh, usually close to the line of scrimmage, and they're going to really go out of their way to take uh, any of the underneath cuts. They're not going to worry so much about getting beat over the top because you have these two deep safeties, that are there to help you out, right? So you've got safety help on, on both sides of the field. And so you can see Mosley gets there, right? See how he gets kind of right on that hip here uh, and he's going to trail. So that way, if he breaks inside on a dig route, he breaks outside, like that's what he's waiting for, right? He doesn't have to worry about um, getting beat over the top because he knows he's got Jaquaski Tart that's there to help. Lenore plays this more like zone coverage. I mean, he's basically playing this like he thinks it's quarters and and he's kind of staying over the top himself. And so because of that, he there's just nobody here. There's nobody in the middle of the field to help on on Adams. And it's a, a very easy completion here to get into field goal range. It's probably one of the reasons the 49ers love to play veterans in situations like this, because there are some lumps that you have to take as a rookie when you're learning. And, and ultimately, it's that little miss, especially against Devontae Adams with a quarterback who knows Devontae Adams really, really well. They work together and have for a few years that end up costing the game. Um, but I think overall, in terms of coverages that you're seeing from D'Amico Ryans, this is not really that far different from what we saw with Robert Sala last year. We're even seeing a sim pressure, which we didn't see with Robert Sala at all last year. And so he is adding new things you see some different items, um, but overall, it's just, you know, it was Aaron Rodgers doing wonderful things, Devontae Adams creating some problems, and a breakdown late from a rookie that ended up costing them a couple of really big plays and ultimately the game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that, and it's it's such unfortunate timing for Lenore as well because, you know, there wasn't a lot of that kind of stuff where, where it's just like kind of yeah. these clear mental errors um, you know, a lot of times when they were, you know, getting beat and, and Rogers beating him, like they were just doing it because he was making excellent throws and, uh, you know, they, they were doing good things to get open. I mean, Adams is obviously a beast to, to handle for just about anybody. So a lot of it, they had to earn it throughout most of the game. Um, and, and they weren't getting necessarily a ton of freebies, but yeah, just a, a really unfortunate time to have that kind of mental lapse to really give them an easy conversion to pick up, you know, a free 17 yards there to, to get into field goal range. 
Now, despite that, I still think Lenore is a starting corner for the 49ers. I still think he should continue to start. We'll see what happens with Josh Norman and his lung over the course of the next couple of weeks. It's astounding to me that he can be day to day with a bruise on the thing that he requires to breathe. But I guess, you know, much like yeah. crushing an egg in your forearm, uh, they're just built different. Uh, so that does it for this week's Patreon video. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for buying us a beer. They're tasty, I promise. Yeah. Uh, and as always, go Niners.